off those a, blinkers. We had a delicious dessert on here once. It was a basil and clementine sorbet. Mm. Was really, that really nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Says he very, 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 very reluctantly. What we can do now is we're just going to literally squeeze that through muslin. Okay, now you can blend that and blend that and blend that and really, you know, get as much as you can out of it. Okay. It's a great colour, isn't it? It's, it's fantastic. Fabulous. And it's really part, to be honest, it's part of the dish. You know, this now gives us a really good squeeze, but it gets very, very messy. Okay, so you have to be very careful and controlled. Right, now you can squeeze all that out, but it's important you get the pulp out as well, not just the, the first bits of juice that comes out. Okay. From there, is that? Now, then we can mix that with our cream. Now, I'm not going to take all of that for this one, just because I didn't squeeze all the exercise. So we're going to take some of that in there. Like that. And then mix in your basil. Mix it straight away. Obviously, it turns the colour. Mix it in. It's cool. So we've got the basil in there, which is yep. nice and green. Now take your gelatine, squeeze all the really excess water out. You don't, want, yeah. you don't want all that excess water in there. There's a bit of residual heat left in that, in that, uh, in the, in the basil mix. So that will melt the leaf of gelatine. Okay. Now that generally well, it might take, you know, sort of 30 yeah. seconds of stirring just to dissolve it all. And then take your glass and pour it in. And put this in the fridge. And this, you know, it might take a couple of hours to set. And like I said, it's really important that you do change the cling film. So if you get that condensation dripping on the top, it's just going to change it. So I'll put it in the fridge. That's it. And I've got one here, obviously, that we did a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. And there we have it. And that's it. Basil panna cotta. Straightforward. Gary's tips for the perfect basil panna cotta are cook the basil for over 30 seconds to get the best puree. Make sure you squeeze all the excess water out of the gelatine. And when you get the panna cottas in the fridge, change the cling film three times in the first 15 minutes to prevent condensation falling on the dessert. Sophie, Matt, oh, tuck in. I was about to discover the colour is mm. sensational. Mm. Mm. That's mm. lovely. The vanilla in there is lovely as well. That it comes through. really smooth. Mm. And yeah. Oh, fresh. Yeah. Lovely. It's going to almost say sort of liquor and a seedy flavour. Yes, yeah. it does, but amazing? like the root licorice, not the, mm. you know, the, the chewy one. Yeah. yeah, it's not overpowering the flavour though, is it? Lovely. It's really, Matt. really good. <laughs> it's very nice, it's very refreshing. Mm. It's very refreshing. Mm. That's good. It's a nice set as well. It'd be rather easy to just eat the entire thing, really, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, I'd love it with some really fresh raspberries in some, wouldn't that be great? Oh, that'd be lovely, actually. Mm. But it is important yeah. to have a loose set. Don't set it too yeah. hard if you're setting it in something. If you put it in a glass, mm. let it be loose. Mm. Has Gary convinced you flavoured panna cottas? Um, that's probably about as far as I'd stretch it. And I wouldn't be going coconut and lime or whatever. Is this a bit of a backhanded sort funny, of funny yeah. concoction? Are you trying to be that's, nice? Um, that's very good. But I'm not, it's not bad. <laughs> I'm not trying, I am nice. That's very good. <laughs> well, very Gary, good, yeah. I think it's absolutely delicious. Thank you very much. You're welcome.